own people and give thy blessing unto thine inheritance. O feed them also and set them up forever. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my God, be not silent unto me, lest if thou makest all thou hearest not, I become like them that go down into the pit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people and the stronghold of salvation to his anointed one. O Lord, save thine own people, and give thy blessing unto thine inheritance. O feed them also, and set them up forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people, and grant them increasing in knowledge and love of thee, he may go from strength to strength in a life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, my Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Here begins the epistle in the third verse of sixth chapter of Blessed Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our Lord man is our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God.
by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the bond of God, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets, and I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the light of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Wednesday Mass at noon will be the St. Anne, Mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Bible study uh, continues today. Still Job, working on Job. We'll get there. Right, Faith? We'll get there with Job, right? Yeah. Okay. Got to start, I've got a, a rock of a story for you. This is written by an 83-year-old woman. I knew I shouldn't have done this, she says, but I am 83 years old, and I was in the McDonald's drive-thru this morning, and the young uh, woman behind me leaned on her horn, started mouthing something because I was taking too long to place my order. So when I got to the first window, I paid for her order along with my own. Cashier must have told her what I'd done, because as we moved up, she leaned out her window and waved to me and mouthed, thank you. Obviously embarrassed that I had repaid her rudeness with kindness. So, when I got to the second window, I showed them both receipts and took her food too. <laughs> now, she has to go back to the end of the queue and start all over. The moral of the story, don't blow your horn at old people. They've been around for a long time. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <clears throat> Thou shalt by no means come out thence, and thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A song in 1969 by a group called Blood, Sweat, and Tears, which group you all remember, of course, has a line, I can swear there ain't no heaven, but I pray there ain't no hell. Laura Nairo, the author of the song, had it all wrong, of course. There is a heaven, there is a hell, and there is an intermediate state. Today's gospel reading, of course, is a warning. Hence the last line. The reading is about justice. And really, justice without some form of retribution is not justice at all. Now, in the Middle Ages, the church stressed the word purgatory and its punitive nature. Souls weeping ceaselessly as they suffered the physical pain of tongues of fire lashing out of them. And then, the emotional pain of having a feeling after that of being in utter darkness, and then a repeat of this vicious circle. And Saint Augustine, in one of his darker moments, even said that the fires of hell and the fires of purgatory are the same fires. But now, this word purgatory, used as an adjective, means having the quality of cleansing or purifying. But the word has never been officially part of the Anglican lexicon. Our term is paradise or the intermediate state. 
think about it this way. Think of it this way. Our Lord on the cross said to the good thief, Jesus, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, not today thou shalt be with me in purgatory. Really doesn't sound very good, does it? The point is this. Based on today's gospel reading and others, on the writings of Paul and others, on the apocryphal book of Maccabees and the revelation of John and the writings of the doctors of the church, the soul, the soul must be purified before it goes in, actually into heaven before the very presence of God. To reach this state, to reach this state of heavenly bliss, the soul must overcome Satan, its evil conscience, and any vicious practice, including rockets. This battle begins at the age of reason and continues as the soul works its way through paradise. Before heaven, there will always be an enemy to be crushed, a sin to be purged, an ungodly habit to be broken. If this all happens, this all happens not through fire, but through the love, I'll be at the tough love of God. Modernism, on the other hand, has pretty much eliminated the need for any intermediate state, thus jettisoning the church expectant as the pious part of the communion of saints. In favor of the dangerous, dangerous theology which says that the soul goes either straight to heaven or straight to hell. Yet if today's gospel means anything, the soul, now knowing that it is saved because it is in paradise and not in hell, understands, understands, it must be cleansed, it must be purified before it is presented without spot before God. So we pray for the dead as evidenced by, among others, the Book of Maccabees, the veracity of which is denied by many not of the Catholic faith, yet this book remains a valid record of historical Judaism. Know, too, that the intermediate state, paradise, has nothing to do with hell. Nothing to do with hell. Hell is the eternal home of the damned, those separated from God, forever. There is nothing they can do. There's nothing we can do for them. Today's gospel is not for them because for them it would be too late unless the advocates of universal salvation, that is a theory that in the end everyone will be saved, including Satan, are correct. Let's, let's look at paradise as the holy hospital of heaven. It is the vestibule and the narthex of heaven. And the souls in this celestial hospital are saved how? By the one oblation of Christ on the cross. All these souls are working out their death. All their temper tantrums, name calling, cursing, unkind thoughts are being vaporized and poured into the stratosphere. Now eventually, these souls will graduate, as it were, and enter heaven. And then others will come along, enter paradise, and go through their own process of purification. Well, how long does this take? Many past. Well, as there is no time in the hereafter, the answer would have to be, now why does that matter? We're talking about eternity. The bottom line is that the last farthing, one quarter of a penny, must be paid. It must all be 